Hello and welcome to my lab. It's now time to test the Skittle sorting machine. I have it set up over here. Let's go. First of all, we'll do a quick recap. Skittles go in here. This feed wheel then takes one Skittle at a time and shoves it into a little hole with a color sensor inside. Once the Skittle goes past the color sensor, uh, the color sensor tells the diverter down here which glass to select. Once it selects a glass, Skittle just falls right on through into that glass and it's ready for another one. It actually does this pretty quickly, so hopefully we can sort Skittles pretty quickly. Uh, right now we have it all turned down in terms of speed just to test it out. Uh, let's see how it goes. All right, I'm about to plug it in and when I do, it's gonna beep and then go through its little auto calibration sequence. Note that I've painted a little orange line on the diverter so you know which one it's selecting. Uh, let's do this. I'm just going to make sure we have plenty of Skittles. Alright, here's the basic interface. I still need to print a knob for this guy, uh, but really all there is to it now is to press the start-stop to start it. So let's do it. So as you can see, even at this slow speed, uh, there's some feeding issues. The software is doing exactly what it should be doing, uh, but there's a couple of places where the Skittles are getting stuck. The first of which is right up here in the uh, tube, right at the color sensor. So uh, we can fix that by just making that larger. Uh, the second is a much bigger deal, and that's that the feed bowl itself is actually buffering uh, one or two Skittles at a time. Due to the way I made the uh, escapement hole here, it actually climbs up a little bit before falling down the hole, which is an obvious issue now that I'm looking at it. Um, but if I were designing this as a real product, I probably would have prototyped this uh, feeble base a couple more times, so we'll just count that as a second prototype. And thankfully, due to the magic of editing, I've got another one printed right here. This one's quite different. The pusher is actually going to go all the way across, and the hole is top dead center. So what this allows me to do is actually just go straight down to dropping. There's actually uh, kind of a compound hole, for lack of a better term. Uh, the first does follow the arc, because the, the shape is designed to follow this arc as the Skittles get pushed in. And they have to, otherwise it, it would all jam up. But then I've created another hole that goes straight down at a, a 45 degree, and that makes it so there isn't any kind of ledge that they can get stuck on. That should fix uh, the issue here, because this whole feed bowl, uh, as its very concept, has to give me one Skittle at a time consistently, so buffering up at the top just destroys the whole point of everything. Then uh, the, the holes are also bigger, which should clear out any of those issues, because they were, they were getting stuck right down at the bottom, uh, I'm still working on finishing this one, uh, they were getting stuck right at the bottom where the, the uh, color sensor meets the feed bowl base. Uh, in terms of finishing this one, I've switched to using uh, automotive body filler instead of wood filler, and I'm liking this a lot better. This is probably the way I'm going to do it from now on, uh, but I'll get this further along and let you know how it goes. So with those couple of changes, uh, I've reprinted the color sensor tube as well, uh, we should be able to test it out again and crank up the speed. Okay, here I have everything pulled apart and the new feed bowl base is finished. I really like the way the finish turned out on this one. I'm not sure if you can see very well here, but here's the old one in my hand here and the new one. It's a much nicer finish. 
the uh, auto body filler did a much nicer job and I think that's because, well, first of all, it bonds a little bit better to the plastic, but also it's a lot harder. So when you're sanding it, it doesn't sand out of the grooves. Uh, this one here, you can still see the 3D printing grooves and all the marks from that. And it also started to fall off while I was sanding it, which was big pain. You can see right here, here's an artifact of that. The, uh, the new one doesn't have any of that, so that's quite nice. So now I'll take the internals from the old feed bowl base and put them in the new feed bowl base, reassemble the whole thing, and then we can give it a spin. Done. So here it is. Uh, and we've also jiggered with the coat a little bit to get it to run a bit faster and more smoothly. Uh, you probably won't see it, but the feed wheel is now vibrating. You'll most likely hear it. It uh, vibrates at a high frequency instead of kind of going back and forth like it was doing. This allows the Skittles to always be in flux, so to speak. It acts a little bit more like a liquid and we can get him through uh, more fluidly. Um, also, we've implemented a, a bit of a retry, so if it you know, runs into a sudden stop, it'll sit there and then go backwards and continue on. And that you'll, you'll probably end up seeing that somewhere along us trying it here. With all that said, it's time to just press the nice orange button. All right, that's good enough. It starts to have trouble when the feed bowl gets low. Um, so as you can see, it's sorting a lot faster and sorting pretty well. Uh, I, it looks, you know, it still makes a, the occasional mistake spitting out a couple into, into one where it ought not. So you can, you can see here, it looks like the last real issue here is these, uh, these shoots right here. Right between the shoot selector and the shoot, they can get stuck just for a, a fraction of a second, but that allows two of them to get close enough together where the diverter is gonna swing around and deposit both of them into one cup and they may or may not be the same color or the right color. So then you end up with it double depositing and it would put a green one in here and a yellow one or an orange one like here. So this is the point in the project where you'd, you know, if, if you were really trying to make this a product, you'd iteratively go through and, and make sure there are you know, are no more issues. And I think ideally uh, you'd want this to be, these shoots to be made out of stainless steel or something, so it'd be really nice and slippery. Uh, this, this 3D printed plastic is uh, really good for prototyping, but not the greatest for uh, material handling. But this, this looks pretty good. Uh, I think I see three errors in this glass, one in the yellow, I don't see anything wrong with the purples. There's two in the orange. Let's see, I see I see one purple in the red. And these issues are starting to get worse too because we've run the this same pack of Skittles through so many times. They're starting to get malformed and uh, that tends to cause a little bit more clogging issues. Interesting side note, it appears, at least in this bag of Skittles, the yellow ones are just a bit bigger 
than the rest and the green ones are just a bit smaller than the rest because green ones almost never cause the clogging issues and it's usually a yellow one when things do get clogged up. It's very interesting. But here we have it. It's sorting fast and it's sorting pretty well. It kind of tempts me to make one out of stainless steel, but uh, we'll probably just go ahead and call this done and move on to another project. So now that we have that sorted, we can finally enjoy some nice Skittles. Toast to a f nice project done.